Most of the time when dealing with color and saturation, less is more. But sometimes less is just less. Have you ever been photographing a sunrise or a sunset and then you get back and you look at your raw files and you're like, man, I remember it so much more colorful than that. Well, you're not wrong because it probably was more colorful. Raw files are flat and lifeless by definition. They're just trying to capture the entire dynamic range of the scene and capture data. It's our job as post-processors to try to breathe the life back into those files. So we're gonna boomify a file. We're not gonna be subtle today. Strap in, let's see how much we can get out of this raw file. So on this particular morning, we had a beautiful sunrise and you would not know it by looking at this raw file. It is so incredibly flat. So today we're gonna talk about dual processing a raw file, dealing with a pretty high dynamic range scene and trying to milk out as much color as you can from a sky that is just not the way you remember it. So I've opened this layer up as a smart object here inside of Photoshop. I'm gonna double click it to begin with. And I'm gonna do what I do oftentimes, which is called dual processing a raw file, which means we're gonna process it once for the shadow areas, once for the highlight areas, because in a dynamic range scene like this, where we have a bright sky, dark rock formation, we have to treat those areas a little differently. Otherwise we're going to destroy our shadow information. So in a scene like this, when we have uh, just, we have a need for more saturation and contrast, one of the basic things that you can do is go to your profile. So by default, Lightroom and Photoshop both import as Adobe Color. But if we click on these, we notice that we have a few other options. We have neutral, we have standard, we have portrait. One of those options is landscape. One of the things that landscape does, as you can probably imagine, is that it actually adds a boost of saturation, a boost of contrast, lifts the shadows a bit. It's a lot of the things that we actually need in this photo. So we're gonna switch the profile to Adobe Landscape. The next thing I'm gonna do is boost our contrast, bring down our exposure. And for this particular frame, we're going to be processing it, trying to breathe some life back into this sky. So I'm only really looking at the sky when making my decisions here. So as I bring down the exposure, you can see we can actually start to see some of that color that we had for this sunrise. So I'm gonna get a little crazy with our contrast slider. I'm also going to bring up our whites and our highlights, which will allow me to bring down the exposure even more. Let's warm up our color temperature so we have a nice balance of warm, colorful clouds, but a little bit of blue in that sky as well. I don't want it too cold where the majority of the sky is blue. I just want a nice contrast of warm tones and cool tones. And I would like those warm tones because it's a sunrise to kind of dominate the cooler tones. So something like this where we just have some cold tones in between those clouds looks a little better to me. When it comes to boosting saturation, the way that I prefer to do it is in the camera calibration tab. It's a more subtle way of adding a little saturation kick. So rather than using the vibrant slider or the saturation slider or even the HSL panel, I prefer to do it down here in this camera calibration tab. So if we open this up, we have hue and saturation sliders for all three of our channels as well as a tint slider for our shadows. In this case, I primarily just like to add saturation either with the blue primary or the red primary. So as I start to bump these up, you can see that we get a bit of a contrast boost, as well as obviously a saturation boost in our sky. I wanna push this fairly far because this is only going to be going into our sky for the most part. And I want to, you know, we're here to boomify. We're not here to be subtle today. So I want to add a little bit more contrast, bring our white slider up a bit, which will allow us to bring the exposure down. And now we're starting to have a nice, vibrant, interesting sky. One of the things that I do in every single edit, I need to tweak our sharpening. So if I hold down Alter Option and click on this masking slider, by default, it's sharpening every single pixel equally. When you import into Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, it's sharpening every pixel equally. 
including the noise in the sky. And as I slide this to the right, it starts to mask out that noise and it starts to only sharpen details. So I always slide this to a point that makes sense for the scene somewhere like this, where it's sharpening details in the rock and the water, but not the noise in the sky makes sense to me. I always like to decrease the radius of my sharpening, which makes it a small fine grain sharpening and increase the detail, which changes it to a deconvolution type sharpening rather than a high pass type sharpening. Essentially, it's just trying harder to sharpen details without those details being very big and blocky. If you, I was to try to explain it, but essentially I do this in all of my landscape photography. Another thing that I do in every single edit is I remove chromatic aberrations. Sometimes I enable the profile corrections only if the vignetting or the distortion that happens with the lens bothers me. In this case, neither bothers me, so I'm not going to worry about it. And at this point, I'm going to hit OK. So what we've just done is we've processed this once for the sky. That is going to be once of our dual processing. So what we need to do now is we need to create a copy of this smart object. We do that by right clicking on the title of the layer and then going up to new smart object via copy. Now we have a second version of this photo that we're going to process once for the shadow areas. So I'm going to double click on this bottom layer here. This is going to bring up Adobe Camera Raw again, and now we're going to process it once with the shadow areas in mind, namely everything below the horizon. So I want the, the beach to look okay in this photo. I want the rock formation to look okay. We need to preserve some of that shadow information. So in order to preserve that shadow information, essentially what we need to do is bring the contrast down reduce the contrast, bring up the exposure a bit. And I still want this dark. I want it to be realistic, but I want there to be shadow information there. By increasing the contrast, you can see that it's blocking up those shadows. And that's one of the downsides of adding global contrast is that you're adding contrast to areas that are not benefiting. They're actually being harmed by that contrast. I call those innocent bystander pixels. So, I need to decrease the contrast here, open the shadows, open the blacks a bit, and that's going to save our shadow information. Now, one of the downsides is that we have very little contrast in this water again, and that isn't going to match well with that heavily contrasty sky. So one of the things that we can do is we can either do it later on with a levels adjustment or something, or I can just go up here, create a linear gradient, add some contrast, recover highlights, bring down exposure, and then drag this up from the bottom. And what essentially what we're doing is this is kind of like a, a manual vignette, but essentially we're making it to where this exposure in the water is going to match what's happening in the sky a little bit better. And I think that something like this is going to be okay. The other thing that we need to do anytime that we're going to dual process a file or exposure blend in a darker sky is we need to make these skies a little bit more similar exposure wise. So what I need to do is I need to let's create a second linear gradient. And in this one, we're going to recover highlights, recover whites, and just drag it down from the top. What that's going to do is make our sky a similar brightness to the darker version of our sky. Granted, this one's going to be very flat and lifeless, but when we go to mask in that more contrasty sky, they're going to match a lot better. So by recovering the highlights in this version, it's going to help that blend. And we're kind of setting ourselves up for success with this exposure blend. At this point, we're going to hit OK. So now we're going to hold down Alt or Option, click on New Layer Mask, which is going to put a black layer mask on our sky version of the photo. And when I exposure blend, I always start at the top with 100% opacity brush. It's a white paint brush. And we're going to start to reveal that contrasty, colorful sky up above this rock formation. So I'm starting up away from the rocks, bringing it down, bringing it down. And now at this point, we've kind of created a little bit of a halo for ourselves. Now, there's several different ways that you can blend or make a selection of the sky, because what we need to do is create a selection of the sky that's going to function like a stencil to help us finish this blend. We could go up to Select Sky, 
and that's going to create a selection of that sky. But I find that sometimes that doesn't work so well. But because in this particular case, we have a very defined sky and the two exposures that we're blending together are not so different, it'll actually work pretty well in this case. So I'm just going to hit select sky. It's going to create a selection of that sky. Now I've got marching ants, which tells me that we have an active selection. I'm going to hide those marching ants by going control or command H. Go back over to our layer mask and use that selection as a stencil to help us finish this exposure blend. Don't need to be careful over by this rock formation. I'm just going to quickly do that. The only area that we might get some weirdness is over on this horizon. So as I do this, you see how the sky becomes darker than that horizon. That's bad, <laughs> obviously. So what we need to do is just be very subtle and slow. I'm going to go down to a 20% opacity brush. Just do a couple passes there where we start to blend those two layers together. I'm not bringing this layer in fully here. I'm feathering it in. That way it's a slow transition in. So by holding down Alt or Option and clicking on our layer mask, it gives us this view where we can actually see the current state of our layer mask. And at this point, I'm just going to quickly finish any areas that I see are not quite, not quite finished. And then after I've done this, I'm going to zoom in and look for any halos or artifacts that painting through that selection might have caused. Now, had I had the dynamic range of this scene been more extreme, you know, we are blending in a much darker or a much darker sky than we had for our foreground layer. At this point, like most likely we would have some artifacts simply because the select sky function isn't perfect. But because these two layers were similar enough, there's not, there's not really going to be anything noticeable, even if it wasn't perfect, because those two skies were not so crazy different. Now, this is the current state of our photo. We have a nice, saturated, boomified sky and a, a foreground that still has shadow information, but matches because we've brought down the brightness and we've added this kind of linear gradient of contrast to this foreground. So at this point, I would continue editing this image. I would probably open these shadows a bit more. One of my favorite ways of opening shadows is simply just to go grab a darks luminosity mask. Let's try darks three, darks four. That's going to really target those dark shadows in that rock formation. And then we could simply grab a, let's grab a curves adjustment layer. So now we have a curves adjustment layer with this as its layer mask, which means that as I bring up the left side of this curve, it's going to open shadows. Now, obviously I don't want this going everywhere. I only want it going into the rock formation. So what I'm going to do is throw this layer inside a folder or a group, put a layer mask on it, a black layer mask, grab a white paint brush, 70% opacity brush, paint it into this area and boom, We've just opened the shadows and we've done it through a very targeted layer that's only going to affect the area that we want it to affect with this layer mask. And it's only going to affect the tones that we want it to affect with this luminosity mask. We can clean up the sensor dust that we have up here. Lumenzia has a terrific find dust function. So if I just click on the check dust, it's going to add this contrast layer to where I can really see all of the dust spots. And it gives me this heal and clone layer and it selects my spot healing brush. So I can just quickly go up here, grab my sensor dust areas, clone them out and then delete this contrast adjustment layer that it gave me and boom, got rid of our sensor dust. At this point, I would love to add just a little hint of glow over this horizon. So I'm going to grab a soft light layer, really bright, but desaturated orange color. I'm going to go 20% opacity brush and just do a few clicks over here on this horizon and allow that soft, warm light to spill over these rocks just a little bit. 
This is the kind of thing you do not want to overdo because it becomes really apparent before, after, if I zoom in a little bit so you can see what it's doing before, after, just kind of adding a little bit of warm light spilling over those rocks. And of course, we have to do a Nick Page Orton effect to this. So create a merge visible layer, control shift, alt E, go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're gonna blur it up around the pixel radius of our camera, hit okay. 22% opacity, throw a lights one luminosity mask on it. And I'm gonna add some contrast to this as well. We're going to apply this as a layer mask by hitting the mask button. And then we're gonna open this layer up in Adobe Camera Raw. This is the blurred layer that I'm opening in Camera Raw. And we need to brighten it and add contrast to it. So we're added, adding a whole bunch of contrast, brightening it up, adding some warmth to it. Because remember, this is only going into the highlight portions of the photo. And it's just going to give it a nice little highlight glow to the image. And because it's a little, little dark still, I'm going to grab a levels adjustment. I'm going to drag this right slider over to the left. Put a black layer mask on here. Grab a paintbrush, 40% opacity. And just paint it into the center of the photo, kind of like a reverse vignette. Careful not to add too much of it over to the right part of this photo because it'll blow out those highlights. So in just a few minutes, we went from this, which is an incredibly flat, lifeless raw file, as a lot of raw files are, to this where we've breathed life back into that sky. We've really increased the, the feeling of saturation in that sky. We've added a little bit of atmosphere. And uh, in my opinion, it's a whole lot more interesting to look at than this, which was the original raw file. All right, so hopefully there's a couple nuggets in there for you guys. Hope you're all doing well. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.